So oh. when are we starting the video? I'm gonna suck. Really? Yes. <laughs> Only two more hours? Hi, my name is Arthur Chu. I'm 27 years old. I live in Alexandria, Virginia, and I am the king of the nerds. So I guess I've known I was a nerd ever since I was a little kid. I mean, when I went into kindergarten, it was rough because it turned out there wasn't much for me to do in kindergarten because I knew all the things you were supposed to know. So I would sit around uh, reading, you know, chapter books while the other kids were learning to sound out the names of colors or learning the names of different kinds of animals. And it was kind of boring for me. I would often just, you know, do multiplication and long division problems uh, on my own just to pass the time. These hold a lot of sentimental value. This is a uh, wizard staff and that is a lightsaber, sort of fantasy and science fiction. These are both uh, gifts that I, um, I gave my girlfriend uh, when I proposed to her, as well as a ring, not instead of a ring. But eventually my parents decided it was time for me to get IQ tested. They put me in this room with a uh, testing proctor for like two hours, and uh, you know, after I finished the test in the first 10 minutes, I just spent the next hour and 50 minutes just kind of flicking boogers around and trying not to meet the guy's eye. Down here we have a pretty cool book, The Genius Factory, by David Plotz. That was uh, the story of the repository for germinal choice, which was one of the first major sperm banks in U.S. history, uh, based on getting high IQ people to donate to their genetic material for the good of humankind. Uh, I was really excited about that until I found out, found out that uh, they pretty much reject anyone who's under six feet tall. So there went that career option. I thought I was in trouble when they wouldn't give me my scores. I know everyone else who'd gone there at my school had gotten their scores and they just wouldn't release them to me. They said I had to go back in for further testing. and That sounded ominous. I thought I was really going to get it. Um, this here is uh, from a really fun field trip that I went on on my lunch break at work to the uh, DC Fire Department Museum. There was just a guy talking to me in a suit and the guy uh, seemed to I don't know. He seemed to ask really stupid questions, like, what is an orange? What does orange mean? And so I would say, well, an orange is a kind of fruit. What kind of fruit? And I said, well, a kind of citrus fruit. And I said, well, what does the word citrus mean? And I said, That's a stupid question. A citrus fruit is a kind of fruit that comes in sections. that's characterized by a thick, thick, pulpy rind. Biography of James Tiptree, Jr. A lot of classic science fiction here. It's known for having high concentrations of vitamin C. Well, it's vitamin C. Uh, vitamin C is the common term for ascorbic acid. It's an organic chemical. What's, what's an acid? And I'm like, well, uh, that's, a, that's a tough one. I was actually all worried about that. It's like, uh, textbooks uh, and some Nintendo games and D&D uh, &D 3.5 collection. So that's pretty much my college experience right here in a nutshell. It wasn't until later, until I was like 16 years old, that I found out that the reason they never gave me my score from those tests, no, the reason they never gave me my, my score from those tests was that apparently they told my parents I was a genius and I was off the right hand edge of the chart. Um, they really didn't know what to do with me, so they told my parents they had to be very careful uh, because I could grow up to be the next Albert Einstein or I could grow up to be the next Unabomber. Or at very least turn out to be one of those homeless people who, you know, sits in a subway station and gives free lectures on quantum physics. So here we have, oh, here we have the, uh, the liquor. Okay, move down, move down, move down, move down. <laughs> this is a more socially acceptable addiction. Uh, here we have an original NES and Sega Genesis, Super NES. And then uh, we jump forward to the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox 360. You'll notice there's a couple of console generations missing there, the, the N64 and GameCube era, or the PlayStation 1 era. Um, those two generations are, in fact, the lost years, the barren years, what I like to call the uh, uh, had-to-graduate years. And here's Cordwainer Smith, here's C.M. Cornbluth, a very neglected Golden Age science fiction writer. Little known fact, uh, he never once brushed his teeth in his entire life. Colleagues say his teeth were literally green. And this is this is cinnamon, uh, so that's a little tuft of her fur. She was a very great cat, and uh, and we do miss her deeply. This well, the apartment's not very big, and most of the Star Wars stuff had to go. But no, not this one. This is Star Wars rocks. 
So Eliza and I have taken on a couple of roommates. This is Arnold Schwarzenegger and Chuck Norris. Still having a tough time telling them apart. Hey Arnie. Hey Chuck. Are you Chuck? Okay, so I got to admit, um, the, the 4x4 Rubik's Cube is a little more of a challenge for me. Um, so I can't get that done quite in under 15 minutes. But as you can see, it, I, I have solved it uh, a couple times. The zombie survival guide, indie band survival guide. So if there's any zombies or indie bands, we're ready for that. This is about the level of order you can expect in the house. This is uh, Asimov Science Fiction, latest issue. Um, I don't really pay attention to the newspapers once I've uh, stripped the crossword puzzles out of them. I barely remember anything that happened in high school, just somehow I got out with a 4.8 GPA and they let me give a speech at graduation. It was over in less than two hours, which was good. The principal wasn't too upset. Unfortunately, I don't have either of the two trophies I won for my math competitions in high school, or uh, the uh, kind of fake trophy that they gave us for top scorer for uh, my uh, college bowl team I was the top individual sc scorer for Swarthmore College and went to NAQT Nationals in 2005. Most of you probably never heard of what that is. That's like Jeopardy, only much, much harder, and you don't actually win any money. So I fail to see why it hasn't gained more widespread popularity anyway. Uh, college was a little bit more of a struggle for me. And it turns out that it's not quite as easy to keep your GPA up when you're not living with someone who physically restrains you from staying up to five in the morning playing video games. But, uh, you know, I did get my speed run of Super Mario Bros. 3 down to nine minutes. That was a major milestone for me. And I did graduate in uh, five or six years. That was another major milestone. Uh, I spent a lot of time uh, working on the student newspaper, The Phoenix did some parliamentary debate, quiz bowl. That's, I still continue working on uh, trivia. It's a major part of my life. What I remember most about college was, well, the Swarthmore student newspaper was called The Phoenix, and I was sent to document an event that we hold at Swarthmore called the Pterodactyl Hunt, which is a very serious rite of passage wherein uh, people test their mettle and their imagination and a contest of wits, skill, and strength, and I was sent to document the event, so as a representative of the media, I of course had to come up with an appropriately uh, meaningful costume. I was one of the uh, co-founders of the Swarthmore Coalition for the Digital Commons, which was later renamed Free Culture Swarthmore. That was a big deal, a very idealistic and influential activist group with very serious philosophical reasons that we should be allowed to download music for free. I've always been a performer. I've always had uh, the, the love for the stage. And I applied my craft in college, uh, ranging from everything from ribald Shakespearean comedies. Be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. To uh, dark, modernistic drama. And when everything's in order again, I'll lie down, put my head on my shoulders, warm my bones on the decay, and smile. And to uh, some stuff that I, I produced myself, like uh, my, my work at a one-man show of the 1999 uh, seminal film Fight Club. People were always asking me, did I know Tyler Durden? One minute. Ground zero. We're at the beginning. Maybe you should say a few words to mark the occasion. <laughs> Unfortunately, in real life, finding paying work as an actor is a little more difficult, and I've had to uh, go to some more commercial realms of acting. And now, I'm happy, she's happy, and it's the beginning of a brand new day. Viagra is not for everyone. Consult your doctor before using. Side effects may include sweating, dry mouth, nausea, death, We're here at a shoot for a commercial for AMC's The Walking Dead, and as you can see, I'm an extra 
so basically, um, we drove about an hour and a half uh, for this gig. It's uh, an hour and a half out in uh, Maryland uh, for approximately uh, zero money. And they also rolled me around in the mud. So all told, it's, it's really one of the better gigs I've gotten in terms of uh, compensation. I feel this is one of the more emotionally involving roles I've been asked to take on. I'm a vacationing zombie. Also, it's just, you know, after a, a long day of work, um, the idea of dead tourists is very appealing to me. <laughs> Turns out that when it comes to a day job, there is no better stage than our nation's capital itself, and, uh, I have the enviable position of uh, showing millions and millions of tourists the monuments and memorials of Washington, D.C. every day to make a living. Uh, I can't really do that in here, so, you know, as my sister says when she gets depressed, let's go to the mall. Memorial on one wall is the famous Gettysburg Address. This is the slightly less famous but equally important second inaugural address. If you look here, the uh, artist screwed up the word future, whoever was carving this, and put an E instead of an F, and you can see that they sort of fixed it, but you can still tell that it's there. That was the first thing I noticed when I first came here, because I am an inveterate, exacting proofreader. So this year, uh, in order to celebrate American capacity for honest intellectual self-reflection, the reflecting pool has been temporarily replaced by non-reflective by dirt. Uh, things were, were rough between us at the beginning. There were some, some alignment differences. Um, you know, basically, uh, we just sort of avoided each other. Then there was a point where you were attacked by, by ghouls. And I don't know if you've ever been attacked by ghouls, but it is a very traumatic experience. She succumbed to the ghoul fever, and, uh, and I was tasked with guarding her corpse while we transported it back. In that time, you know, I found us developing a bond. After she, uh, she returned from the dead, tainted with the dark corruption of the underworld, that was when we really began to connect and we had to overcome a lot of challenges, such as temporary demonic possession by psychic mind worms and, you know, my lacking any physical gender due to being a constructed killing machine. But, you know, Every couple has these rough patches when they, they start dating. Before long, you know, our, our uh, romance was the subject of uh, folklore and legends sung by every bard and every uh, tavern and inn throughout the continent of Corvair. That, that was a little bit after that that we actually began dating in real life, you know, with the permission of our dungeon master, of course. That was when things started actually getting, you know, weird. Because Arthur knows everything. Oh,